What's up guys and girls, if you didn't know, you can actually use Bing AI to write long form articles and blog posts. So in today's video, I'll be generating a long form article and comparing the results to ChatGPT to see if Bing AI is actually better at creating long form articles or blog posts compared to ChatGPT. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to be using the same prompt and process that I would use on ChatGPT. So we're just breaking up the prompts. So the first prompt is going to tell the AI to create an outline for the topic in which we have in mind. So for this example, we'll be writing a blog post about the timeline of the AI revolution from the 1940s to 2023. In the prompt, I've also told it to keep in mind that this is the target keyword. So we need to include that within our H1, H2, and so on. So let's go ahead and see the output that we're able to get back here from Bing. And the great thing about Bing, especially when it comes to writing a more up-to-date article or more factually correct article, it's going to be connected to the internet. So essentially you'll be able to get more up-to-date information because Bing can go ahead and connect to the internet to give you a more relevant information about a variety of different topics. So that helps you a lot when you're writing more up-to-date information. Okay, so this is the blog post outline in which we were able to get back. So the timeline of AI revolution from the 1940s, the early days, the golden age, the AI winter, the rise of machine learning, current state of AI, and the future of AI. So this seems pretty good. So now let's prompt the AI to write the full article. So again, I'm going to be using the same prompt that I usually use to generate the full article. Essentially what we're telling it here is to include list and facts, always write in markdown format, write in simple, easy to read style, and I'm going to tell it to write each section individually. Now this should allow us to write a much longer article. Hopefully it will be able to listen to that um, response and be able to follow those instructions. Also the prompt tells it to create a title. Keep in mind the target keyword, so include the keyword um, that we're going after and variations of that keyword throughout the article. So let's go ahead and run this and see how this does. It seems as though it is following those instructions. So here is the first section of the blog post, the timeline of AI revolution from the 1940s to 2023. So it wrote up to the AI winter, which is about half of the article. So now I guess what we can do is generate the other half of the article. Now you can also tell it to include um, tables, list, bolded words and things like that, because I did tell it to um, include those things, but it hasn't really included any list or tables within this article. So I've told it to create a table signifying the AI timeline up to this point. So let's go ahead and see if we can get a nice table here. So this is a table in which we get back. It's not bad by any means. It starts from the 1940s to the 1950s, goes all the way up to the 2020s. So not a bad table. We can definitely go ahead and use this within our article. So let's go ahead and tell it to now continue writing the full article. So instead of picking up from where it left off, it actually went ahead and rewrote the full article. So it started back from the early days. So that's a problem with using Bing AI. Sometimes it doesn't really follow instructions, but if you steer it in the right way, you are able to get a pretty decent output. So this is technically the full article, excluding the intro, and it's pretty short for my likings. It's only about 814 words. So let's go ahead and see if we can actually expand this article. The prompt that I'll be using is I'll be telling the AI to keep the same writing style, but just expand this article to include more information. Here's the expanded article that we got back from Bing AI. So again, it talks about the early days, the golden age, the AI winter, rise of machine learning, current state of AI, and the future of AI. But unfortunately, it was cut off because the chat had reached its limit. So that's again another limitation that you have with Bing AI is that it's not necessarily um, made to write long form content. It's made to be able to chat, to be able to have a conversation with the AI. I definitely do think that there's some pros of using Bing AI. You can first connect to the internet, as I mentioned before. You can also create pretty nice charts and things like that, and this will have more up to date information. But when it comes to creating long form articles and blog posts, I still prefer to use ChatGPT or Claude AI because those are much more easier and much more catered for creating long form articles or blog posts. And for reference, I ran the same inputs on ChatGPT and this is the article in which we were able to get back. Personally, I think that this is a little bit better. It's much easier to read. It's much more well formatted and it's also a little bit longer. This is about 1500 words while the article from Bing was a little bit less than a thousand words. So again, I would still go with ChatGPT over Bing AI when it comes to creating long form content. And that is because it's much easier for you to create content using ChatGPT. 
I think the main advantage that you have with Bing AI is that you're able to connect to the internet. So the main drawback with this blog post maybe is because it doesn't have any up-to-date information. As we can see here, it's talking about GPT-3 while GPT-4 has already been released. So that is one of the limitations when you're using ChatGPT by itself. But overall, I think you're able to get better blog post content. Hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. Hope that you learned something new. If you did, let it be known by giving us a big thumbs up and subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Until next time, stay well.